大家好，我是江西新宇，主编老李，主编。Is it from this place? Is it from Jiangxi Province, but not really from this region. But look at this basket, actually made by Mr. Li. He's a really advanced craftsman. So this is really look at that subtle details. So look at the really really fine details, but made by this gentleman. It's a rich experience. And look at this one. I'm having this one. And I can tell it's even more comfortable than my backpack. And this is a pack basket, also made by Mr. Lee. And we look at our surroundings, and this is take a guess what's this kind of fruit. And to be honest, this is also very first time for me to see this. I think it's apple. Or take another guess. Some people talk it's the a bottle gourd. Uh, Mr. Lee gave you a hint. It's it's very tasty. So what's this? So the local introduced to me. So this is a passion fruit, passion fruit. So it's really tasty and also actually has a quite a yield rate here. And also good to your health. So it's a taste a little bit sour, but also sweet. So this place actually really quite rich in the planting passion fruit. So it's really good to your health and also really good for the locals to improve their living income. So we talk about the villages. Actually, people in my village really need these kind of pillar to further boost our living standards. So I also would like to bring this experience back to my village. And I can tell you right now, you think it's a harvest season? Actually, already passed the harvest season, which was July. But actually, look at this. Actually, can last from July to March next year. So you can tell this is actually is. Have this sustainable in a way, sustainable income for local villagers. So we talk about as long as you have this trellis, you have this framework built up. Actually, the villagers actually can live on these frameworks. We talk about the locals really actually need these kind of the a trellis. So they can grow this kind of fruits. Actually, can generate sustainable income for local villagers. And you look at actually this. Is, we talk about the harvest season actually lost from July this year to next year March or April. So this is really good income, and also really tasty fruit for everyone. And also because we have this basket. It should not be empty, right? So it's a time for us to take some fruit back home. And we talk about this the whole places here. This is the a fruit and a vegetable greenhouses, and it's allowed to pick some fruits or veggies back home. So we don't know. Let's say where is the best place. So we talk about the local villagers. Really, you think this is a fruit? Actually, local villagers that they live on this ground, right? They live on this land, so they need this kind of the really sustainable and reliable, let's say, reliable source of income. So look at it. this. Has a lot of wines, and also at each wine we see a lot of fruits. So let's pick some. So look at uh, ladies. Ladies really got really nice ones. So the green one actually is not mature yet, but look at the one turned to right, which means it's ready. To be picked.
So let's see which are the best to pick. This one, these all are good to have. So it's dependent on the color. And also we have the really the different techniques to pick it up. You cannot just pull it or drag it from the tree. Actually, we have a sort of technique. They easily take it from the wine. So look at based on the color, we can tell it's 50% mature or 80% mature. So it's total right color, which means 100% mature. So it's be careful. You need to like hold it and then pick it. If you drag it from the wine, you may actually damage the other fruit on the same wine. Oh, how long have you been working here? Three years. What about income here? Yes. Not bad. So it's 70 RMB per day. So around 2,000 RMB per month. So we also have a farming land at home. Actually, we also take the time after work to grow these kind of the a passion fruit trees at home. So it's the same category of a passion fruit. Actually, we bought a seed from this greenhouse place. So actually, the a green fruit I grow at home also helped me to generate 20,000 to 30,000 RMB per year. So that's additional income, actually, because the lady actually has a fixed income or she has a job here. And also, actually, she learned that technique and also helped her family to grow these kind of the a passion fruit trees and also help them to earn additional house in household income. So the villagers actually learn from each other and also try different ways to improve their living standards. So we talk about actually this is a really good way for the a local villagers to make additional incomes and look at actually for that lady and same for the other villagers actually they live together with their families they could can have time to take care of their family members and also at the same time they also can work and also have additional income so we talk about actually this is a really good way for local villagers to improve their living standard So of course you need to be trained so you know how to pick from the wine. So we need to have this kind of the a trellis. So we can build up this trellis. And as long as we have this in place, then we can grow passion fruit. And also with us, we have a two special guests, Mr. Liu. And she's the person in charge of a sales department. And also Mr. Peng, he's the boss of this greenhouse. 
So look at it for today. Look at this is the yield rate is around the seventy jin. Actually, for daily, actually, we sell both online and offline, and we normally can sell at around five hundred jin per day. We talk about actually the business is really good, and is welcomed by the wholesalers. So every day we look at the a fruit. Actually, they can be total sold out every day, and at the peak time, the wholesalers actually need to make pre-orders. So let's say the this year August tenth, we had a trade fair for passion fruit. So that day we actually sold two hundred eighty thousand jin on that single day. So look at actually look really nice, right? In a very good shape and the color. So and we also have a specific tools, and then actually this is the tool for us to taste. The passion fruit. So see a spoon, and this is, I believe, is something that actually come with your purchase. So this is how it works. So it's a very easy tool. The same spoon actually help you to like, open the hole, let's say, and then you have a spoon, so you can enjoy this passion fruit right away. So rich texture. So you need to mix it a little bit. So actually, I can tell it's for the first bite. It first come with that sour taste, but then right away it's really sweet. So cheers! So it's a passion fruit party going on here. So this is the very first time actually I enjoy passion fruit right behind the field, and also the first time for me to actually use this kind of very smart tool. And at the same time, in Beijing, it's snowing. It's our very first snowing day for this winter this year. And at the same time, here this is. Gobo Village, Jiangxi Province in China, South East China's Jiangxi Province. So villagers are picking passion fruits as they experience the joy of autumn harvest. So we talk about actually this is the fruit for living a richer life. So we talk about passion fruit actually play a key role here in. Changing people's life profoundly here. So we look at the passion fruit. Actually, you grew this year, you harvest this year, and you sell them this year. Actually, this is really can help you to generate that income in a very faster pace. Right now, we talk about you look at this trellix. Actually, it's lost for two years, and right now we're working on a sense and technology part to make sure that the a life experience or life cycle can extend it to three years or even more than three years. So this is just one passion fruit 
park, let's say, the greenhouse. But actually, this is a really large place. It's not only have passion fruit, but also have other vegetables and fruits. This is the vegetable and fruit greenhouses. So look at actually this is the a local people call it it's really cash call because this is really really good in terms of income and we talk about it really can harvest right now even every day so the local villagers actually have really high tension high the passion to grow this kind of food. They really like this kind of fruit. So based on our drawn, you can t tell that this is really vast places. We talk about this greenhouse places. Actually, this is also the have a really good selling performance. And a lot of wholesalers actually online and offline waiting the fruit from this greenhouse. We talk about Mr. Lee actually, he's a master in weaving baskets. So we talk about, look at it here, we not only grow passion fruit, we also grow vegetables. And look at the disc veggies. Actually, we pick them today. So look at actually, it's including different spectrums so this is a bitter guar and this is just harvested today from the greenhouse take a guess So this is around 30 centimeters. Our minimum length of a bitter guar should be at least 30 centimeters. So that's our hardcore requirement. That's our standard here. And also look at this tomato in a really, really attractive red color. It looks really tasty, right? So it's a really clean food. So let Mr. Lee continue his weaving work. Once again, you look at the basket, actually it's Mr. Lee's work. And he's also right now weaving another basket. And I talk about Mr. Lee actually owned five decades of experience. And we talk about another very famous or iconic fruit here in Jiangxi province is the a navel orange. We look at actually, we look at the right here, this is the greenhouse actually in 2003. And it's actually experienced the Huang disease. So, so we talk about this only way actually to kill this disease is to really cut all these trees. We talk about this is the a citrus yellow shoot. We can consider it as the cancer. Actually, there's no really good solution to save trees. So the only way back then in 2003 is we actually really cut all the trees, cut all the trees down. So that's also for local farmers actually lost source of income. So we talk about actually the ideal situation after that was that they took three years for them to regain their income. 
So that's actually the experience or the lesson learned back in 2003, and then they start to think about what is more reliable or resilient fruit that can bring benefit for local villagers. So that is why we talk about the passion fruit. So passion fruit really actually depends on your work. If you work harder, then you can actually harvest more passion fruit. And right now we are also establishing a high quality standards for local villagers. So which is we tell and teach them how to grow high quality passion fruit or passion fruit with higher yield rate. So we talk about actually happiness or income rely on your hard work. So because of that disease in 2003, So that's the citrus yellow shoot actually bring this additional lesson to the local villagers actually that open the new chapter for this village. So this is also a mature passion fruit. So we talk about when is the good time to pick passion fruit. We talk about when they come to 70% mature, then it's good to pick them from the trellis. And then for transportation, that all leading period actually needs some time, right? And also like for local villagers, they picked it first and then a stalk up at home that also take a little bit longer time so that when they consume the fruit, the fruit already total mature. Look this one. Actually, this is a little frog and also good. You can consider us the passion fruit holder. So based on your judgment, Mr. Lee, he said he created a frog. He weaved a frog. Actually, look at this bamboo weaving technique. So it's a frog, but I create this is really perfect for the passion fruit holder. So Mr. Lee, you look at his really own that advanced techniques. He can wave that basket while walking. And we talk about this kind of basket. Or the A, we talk about the cab. Cabas, which is welcomed by Children. So we talk about these kind of technique actually need to pass on to the next generation, and also actually help Mr. Lee to create the selling channels. So we talk about actually different ways to think about the basket or the the a bamboo waved. Frog actually can be a perfect passion fruit holder. So anything is possible. Right now we arrived at a local household house. And actually we talk about this with the local features. And here is a lot of Mr. Lee's work and hello to everyone. So look at this one. Actually, it's very fashion brand. It looks like a luxury brand. Actually, this is also Mr. Lee's work. Sophisticated work. Really, really fine details.
So it's not expensive. So let's look at what we have on the table. And this is oh, the local featured fruit. So look at what we have here on the table. We have passion fruit. We also have the navel oranges. And I believe we also see a jar of the a rice wine. So look at this is a really local featured house cell. And this is the southeast China's Jiangxi province. And the village is called Gaobu Village. So look at all the baskets here, actually all made by Mr. Li. So you look at actually kind of basically for one basket, it can basically have five to six passion fruits, I believe. So really respect Mr. Li's craftsmanship. It's really high technique. So we have a navel orange. So this navel orange also from Gobu village, this village. Look at the color, it's really that gold, sheer shining color. So it's also our pride. And we talk about after 2003, that disease. Actually, right now, we're also creating a new record of that yield rate. We talk about the a yield rate of navel oranges actually right now picking up its speed. So we talk about actually it's three colors. At the very beginning is, is the little bit gray and then to the or to the yellow color and then it will become that total orange color. And we also have that the a package where the back that's the dried navel orange. So it's really good snacks. So look at that bottle, it's not orange juice. It's fermented glutinous rice. So it's sweet fermented rice wine. And it's also good for a, a lying in women, especially in their pure herb pro period. And Mr. Lee actually is a local icon. He actually has that influence to increasing sales of the local products. I believe a lot of villagers actually waiting to learn from Mr. Lee on how to really sell all these kind of fruit or products online and offline. So we talk about as long as is he a authentic products with good quality. And Mr. Lee can guarantee you that he can sell these products. So the a local villagers actually also like share that online. There are video clips or pictures, but still not have a lot of the viewing traffic. 
So we talk about Mr. Lee also right now is sharing experience. So Mr. Lee actually said that the a top principle is you could not tell a lie. So the black product speak for itself is authentic good ones just say as what they are. So Mr. Lee said that he would like to do everything to help local villagers to improve their income. So we talk about actually right now for local villagers, they also actually create that social media account name, like say account. They have that a social media account name and they also do like this kind of live streaming or actually sell these kind of product online. So they also make some video clip. So we talk about from the touch, look, and taste. It's really nice. And also actually we talk about that orange. It's heavy. It's really heavy. So this is actually different kinds of bottles. So it depends on the transportation. So basically, the local villagers tra tried every way to create a na a brand of a local products, so they can have a better sales performance online or even offline. So we talk about actually this the way not really sell these really good is like you don't have a really attractive package. So look at the original bottle. It's like a second hand bottle. But if we actually we know this bottle actually designated for this kind of fermented rice wine, but actually if you not really have that really nice package, it's not look that high quality or attractive. So people not really have that desire to buy the product. So actually, we talk about maybe crossovers like Mr. Lee's basket and plus local products, right?
So, or maybe think about this one. So basically, give me all the measures and also the weight, and I can make baskets designated for this kind of jar. A lot of people really appreciate that basket. So we talk about the bamboo weaving products, actually, also available online. So we talk about we not only have the a basket, we also have look at this kind of bag. It's a really like luxury look bag. And also you can search Global Village online and you also have the a purchase link available online. So actually, we talk about for this kind of fruit, actually, we also can take a little clip to introduce that from the very beginning, from a seed, and then finally, these kind of mature passion fruit. So basically, we show these and to add a process to the viewers. I believe that's maybe even more attractive. So for Mr. Lee's village, actually, people may not really own that knowledge and technique in growing passion fruit. So I believe Mr. Lee today also learned a lot. Maybe he later on will also introduce passion fruit to his village. And look at this, this is actually the dried passion fruit. It's really good snacks or a dried sweet potato. Very chewy, very sweet, and actually good for the whole family to enjoy. So this is the a dried sweet potato, and actually also grow made precised here in this local village. <laughs> so I also want to create that iconic taste of Gobble Village. So uh, basically, we talk about they have a really, really good conversation going on because they really like to learn from each other how to actually create more sales of local products. And look at this is a local featured house style. And this is the a global village, Xun County, Ganzhou City, Southeast China's Jiangxi Province. Villagers are picking navel oranges, passion fruits, and tea leaves and making rice wine as they experience the joy of autumn harvest and stock up for winter. So local villagers actually right now improve their living standards. And also look at this one. They built a new house here. Actually started this year, so it's around the three stars. And also next to their home, is their green house. 
So look at actually this is also represents past, today, future. This whole process of history. So at the very beginning, they grew the navel orange, and because of that disease in two thousand three, they cut down all the trees and they lost the source of income, and they shift their focus to growing passion fruit, and then. And coming today, they have that additional income to build up this new house. And we talk about tomorrow, that's the future. We look at that very last, vast places of greenhouses that represent a promising future here in Gambu village, actually also help people to improving their living standards. So there are a lot of different kinds of fruits and vegetables available here in Gambu village.
上阿布苏的茶娃哦，和牛羊在山坡上木茶娃哦，围坐在火塘边呀呼吸呀哦，风吹动桥马花，桥家乡在出发。被称为悬崖村的昭觉县日耳诺乡阿图利尔村有八十四户村民搬迁至县城的集中安置所。央视新闻的网友们，大家好！我们现在是在四川省凉山州昭觉县的温迪社区。Right、now we come to our second mic of today's live streaming, my village and I, and we also have a special guest, a very beautiful lady with us. Her name is Shri Po Ah Wu. Right now, this is the Mu Endi County at Zhaojue County, Liangshan Autonomous Prefecture, in southwest China's Sichuan province. And we talk about this village, very famous actually, is the, because before this place is very famous in China, called the A Cliff Village. And today actually is the New Year for E ethnic group. So they also right now celebrating their traditional New Year. So we talk about for the A Han as the group actually we celebrate by the end of the year and we talk about the autonomous region actually they celebrate their new year after the 10 months And the day actually is chosen by the master who believe that she can talk to the heaven and know everything happened on the ground. So basically, we talk about at the end of the 10th month that marks the E autonomous region. And right now, we're coming to the one household. And actually, let's also look at these places. That's The place is actually it's the a relocation. So that's also part of the effort to improve the living standards for local residents. So we talk about Happy New Year, right? And also we look at the a lady also wear the traditional e 
custom. So as when we celebrate the New Year, because this is really grand occasion, we need to wear this from high to tall. The very classic E custom. So we talk about that if your new house. Talk about your new place. So let's first look at our living room. So this is the living room for my mom. So look very clean, very warm, sweet. And this is my living room, and my bedroom. So because it's a new year, so back home, right? Yes. Uh, the kitchen. So we look at actually they stock up a lot of product, the a uh, food, to celebrate New Year, and they also have access to electricity, water. So we look at the pork and also local featured food. So we talk about actually there is a ceremony we need to eat chao baba, that's a local food. So we need to first eat that food and then let's let her a pig to celebrate the new year. So it's a new life for you, right? So let's make a short interview. So we look at actually you have the a food equipment and the a service available at your kitchen. So when's the time you move from the cliff to this place? May this year. They moved in May this year. So basically right now around half a year. So what kind of the way that you cook back then? So you got used to your new life, new way of living. So look at the electricity. It's actually, a lot of the home appliances actually started to learn how to use them, and we also have the volunteers from the EA community actually teach them how to use this kind of home appliances. So back then, actually, they didn't use any electricity. They just like sometimes would cut their hand by knife. Because we talked about before, they need to use that wood to make fire and then to cook food. So they before lived in the really shabby houses and also quite cold and the a white, especially in the raining day. But right now look at their new house. So this is the a moving products made by the local government to bring the a people living on the cliff to this new place. So we talk about actually we have that venue. Actually, the whole community organize everyone here in this village to actually have different activities to celebrate the new year. So this is our local custom. We bring carry forward that custom. So we talk about how that improve or change their 
household income. So we talk about a lady actually is really skilled in embroidery. So actually she made that embroidery work. Well, around like 10,000 RMB. It's see, a master in embroidery work. So you, she can make her own work at home. And also actually in our community, we also have a specific place for embroidery workers. And actually, we talk about the a women association from the a provincial level and also the a village level actually also help to teach a, a local women to learn that skills. So that's also a way to really solve the a job issues, especially for ladies, because like we talk about the ladies, they cannot really find a job in other places or other provinces. They need to take care of the younger younger ones. So how many buildings do we have here? Around the fifty. Uh, we talk about the size of your house based on the number of people you have for each family. So we talk about the families actually from South West China's Cliff Village actually move right now into these new homes. So this is the a community called Mu and the community. And look at here, we also have the a grocery store here. And actually also because buy the products, not use money, use your coupon. Actually, you earn the points by making contribution to the village, to the community. Actually, that kind of you can think about as your credit or as your points, your marks. Actually, you can redeem your marks, the points for purchasing products from the grocery stores. So we talk about the a villagers actually right now shift their identity to the residents of the village. So they also need to change a little bit their behaviors and also the way of living because they not live in the mountains anymore. So we talk about the ethnic group New Year, their traditional New Year, also the a China's intangible cultural heritage. So you look at actually the e autonomous region people actually also wear look at this the a traditional custom for the a key or ground occasions. So we have different style of this kind of the a local traditional clothes. So let's get inside. So this is a workshop, and this is the a lady from the local women's federation. So this is the embroidery workshop. So this is look at in this village where the community actually they have a, this specific place built by the a local women's federation for the local women's. So we talk about our goal is like for the ladies, they move from the cliff to this new community. They still can take care of their home. They can care and also to make some profits by their hard work. So you look at at the same time, they can take care of the little ones. And at the same time, they also can make this kind of embroidery work to generate income for their family. 
So we talk about the local custom is like where is the mom is the home is. So we talk about the mom actually play a key role in each families. They are the pillar. They are the one. They are the soul of the family. And look at all these works actually all made by the ladies here. Look at the subtle details. Actually, high technique owned by the local villagers. This is all handmade. And we not only have the a closest, we also look at the tissue box, tissue cover, the a small wallet, and also the bag for your laptop. So very dedicated and exquisite. And we also work with the different academy like Beijing Institute of Fashion Technology, and we will have different projects for cooperation. So we will have a different rounds of samples, and we have a sample selection with our cooperation partners, and we we will also sell them in the different places and also the hoodies we talk about. You think about that see a really fashion styles, but look at the embroidery that's maybe the really old fashion, but actually we bring these two together to give the new energy or the new vitality to embroidery techniques. So look at the moms, they can take care of their little baby while making their work. So Zhaozhe County actually is the a larger places of E people gathering here. So we look at we have a different styles, so four key styles. So this is the Eno style. So in different colors, right? Different color and different style. And look at this young mom wear chija style. And this lady saw these styles. So basically four key fashion styles were the a styles of customs. So from the high to tall is very different in terms of the style and in terms of the a uh, different the accessories. So look at the the a uh, plated a uh, kerchiefs. And uh, also the lady here actually in charge of the whole group actually help to really teach the a uh, other workers and also in charge of the a uh, collecting works for delivery. So when was the time for you to own this technique? I learned this after we moved from the cliff to this new community. So at my childhood, my mom told me the very basic ones, but after I moved here, I learned more. So every month, I can generate 12,000 RMB per month. So you can take care of your baby at the same time, also generate that really sound income. So it's not really, it's not bad, right? So it's quite good for the local women. So look at your babies here. You have three children, right? So it's around one month. That's why look at the little baby sleeping. Just one month, the newborn. So look at actually local women, they can take care of their babies, take care of their family. At the same time, they also can make this really sound, reliable income before they just like grow vegetables like corn in the farming land. So just help them to generate three thousand per RMB per year. But right now, a lady actually make twelve thousand RMB per month. So the life much improved. 
sort of really like to thank the president and also the local government because they've really helped them. This is really profound changes in their life. They moved from the cliff uh, right now to this really clean, nice place and also make really sound income. So you can tell from their happy face, their life totally changed because they make more money. So total right now we have around the 200 ladies right now making this embroidery works in this community. So we talk about the minimum income, which means they have few times to work on this embroidery products and they can generate at least 2,700 RMB per month. So we have these training places, we have the exhibition places, and later on we will also teach them the language. Because right now the majority of the ladies here only can speak e-language. We also would like to teach them the Han language or the traditional Mandarin. And we talk about right now this sewing machine. Actually, before we talk about that embroidery technique, just like passed on from generation to generation. Basically, moms teach their daughters how to do this kind of embroidery work. Uh, right now, we also introduce this sewing machine here because for sewing machine that help to produce standardized products. So for embroidery, if it's man-made, basically that means that the uh, each product has different look, sort of, because of everything is man-made. But right now we introduce these sewing machines so they can cut and sew the products more or less in a standardized way. And look at this picture wall. Actually, this is their very first piece of work. So they actually holding their first piece of work and also with their first month's income. This is the smell, this really lovely smell we captured on their first payroll day. And also we talk about The National Women's Federation touched great importance on the e autonomous region, especially the a prosperity of the a local women, and also she paid the visit to this place, and also that hope us to can play a key role for setting up the a good practice and examples. So we also can roll out the experience from here to other provinces and to other ethnic groups. So we talk about a border work is the part of the a pillars for further development, and also we talk about the, for the women's. We would like to actually teach them how to cook or how to do the a household work. So actually, actually, we would like to also bring the more the a fashion styles into the embroidery work. So it's not really the old fashion anymore. It can be really chic, can be really fashionable. So we talk about like we want them to have a really, it's a noble course for everyone. And it's also really a nice job for the local women. And also it's a t help them to have that dignity. And also, we believe that the tourism may be another source to bring additional income to the local villagers. And also, it's maybe a little available online, so the young generations can easily purchase online, right? So 
So let's go to the other places. Maybe right now we can head to the square. So we talk about today. Uh, people celebrate Eid, New Year. So right now at the ground, at the square, I believe they are playing that dance. That dance actually enjoyed a really long history, more than hundreds of years. So we talk about the chief of the county actually also made a little bit the a choreography. So we talk about a torch festival or the new year, you always can see that dancing performance. So that always staged on the key occasions. So that's more the celebration dance. It's so called the Da Ti dance. And we talk about this dance performance actually not limited itself by the places, by the group of people, so which means everyone is good to practice this kind of dance. Actually, this dance was created from the a day to day work of the local E people. So we talk about the early young generations. They also will gather today to celebrate the new year. It's also the a sacrifice activity, so wish good health, safety, and security for the new year for the young generation. So we talk about actually the a people will bring a bowl of pig meat, the chaoba, about the local food for that sacrifice ceremony. So we talk about each household actually will bring their own meat to the activity places, and the a we have a chef or a master. So basically, we'll cut the meat and share with different household. Means that everyone is intertwined. So look at this: is the a young kids living in this village? They also moved from the cliff to this new community. So we choose this really vast place to gather the young generations here. So we talk about we will choose a senior to do that meat cutting job. So this is what he is doing. So basically, we, this is the meat actually brought by the different household. And the a senior right now cut the meat for the young kids and share with them, which also wish them the, a good health for the new year. And this is Dati dance. So look at this dance performance. Actually, it's only available at the key occasions, like the a their ground torch festival or today's New Year. So this is a really big square for this community, and also this is the torch square.
So right now you are looking at the, this is the a series my village and I and today we stop at the two different villages and here this is the a village is the Mu Andi community Zhaoju County Liangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture is located at Southwest China Sichuan Province and today the people from the Yi ethnic group are celebrating their traditional New Year before people living in this community they lived in a cliff village so that's also quite a famous one in China so so started from this year the local government made a great contribution and efforts to bring villagers from the cliff to this new place that also a way to help them to get out of the poverty And that's also does for today's live streaming. And I hope you can stay tuned with CGT New Media. We'll bring you more live coverage. Thank you all.